Well, we're getting ready to uh, dive in the second cut, and it is July 6, 2020, and the field that I'm standing in right now, um, it's been 34 days since we've cut this, 32 or 34 days, and we're actually going to lay it down today. So, uh, we did a bit of a test spot or test strip uh, in this field. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right beyond where I'm standing here now. And what we had had done, or what we had done to this field and all of our alfalfa fields, we ended up having Auburn Ag uh, spray for leaf hoppers and aphids. And not only did they spray for the leaf hoppers and the aphids, but they put a foliar product on of some kind of a little bit of boron. So they had a test strip here. Uh, they went around the field once. The booms on their sprayer are 120 feet wide. So you can see right on the edge here, uh, you can just about tell right where they didn't spray. This is about six or seven inches shorter than what we have here. So right now I am standing right between the two pieces, the sprayed on the left, not sprayed on the right. You can see this here. It's got a lot of yellow to it, and it's a lot drier. Um, the stems are uh, broken. There ain't as many leaves on there. You've got a lot of leaf damage from the leaf hoppers themselves. Once they get on the leaf, um, they bite the leaf and suck the uh, juices out of it, and then it makes the plant sick. Now this will affect this cutting, or it will have a potential to uh, not only affect this cutting, but it can also affect the um, stand on this particular spot the rest of the year. So um, we run into problems like this when uh, we come into a dry year, and you can see it on the wet years too. And um, we're again walking from what was treated to, or what wasn't treated to where it is treated. You can see that line all the way down through to the end and then when he swung around with his, you know, he went around the field and his booms are 120 feet, so it's come this way 120 feet. They're standing, sprayed, not sprayed. We'll throw the drone up in the air. This is a 25 acre field. Um, we seeded this in 17, I believe it was, 17 or 18. So this is Cropland Aphitron. Um, this is a herbicide resistant alfalfa. And the mowers are gonna be here in a little while. We'll actually take a peek and stop in where they're cutting, um, at least get some shots of the self pelled mower. Uh, I gotta get chopping here in a few minutes. I don't know if I'll have time to step on, uh, step in and check on the potting or not, but um, we'll try to get some shots of that. But this is about past my knee here. I've got a ruler in the truck, I had measured it earlier. See the spray tracks are here. So we'll go ahead and set the drone up quick. Uh, I don't know if this camera that I'm holding, if it, if you could tell by what that looks like or not. All right, we are just lifting off with the drone here now, and you can clearly see what was sprayed and uh, what wasn't here. Again, there's um, the booms on the sprayer are 120 feet wide. And you can see the edge uh, right where the spot starts where it did not get uh, sprayed right in front of us. And then I'm gonna move the drone over and then what you're gonna have is this, uh, on half the screen, you're gonna have the spot that it is not treated or sprayed. 
and then the spot on the left here uh, where it was sprayed you can see quite a difference there it's it results in about six tenths of a ton of dry matter roughly and we'll be able to of course measure it when we go to chop this and then you can see the spot to the west side here to our left the center of my truck is marking about where this one edge is and then we'll fly up to the edge on the headland and you can see that spot there so we're going to go check on um, the John Deere self pelt mower now and then we're going to have to get chopping here it is hot and this hay is drying out fast with what we've already cut and laid down We just pulled into the field that we videoed the other day uh, and we kind of did a little bit of a test strip in where we had um, sprayed the bug killer and where we didn't and that is in this field. Um, I've got a couple of orange cones set up up in front of us here and that is the part in the field where we did not apply the insecticide and uh, uh, growth regulator so once we get into that part of the field we're going to grab some samples and we're going to have that and analyze to see what the differences are in the feed value of the treated hay and the non-treated hay the treated hay should be a lot healthier than the non-treated hay and um, just kind of see how that all pans out but you can kind of see the thickness of these windrows here and then the thickness of these windrows that are right here a bit smaller
All right, we are just getting done chopping this one field that we did a test strip in where we did not have insecticide and the plant growth regulator applied. Now, what I ended up doing is I ended up grabbing a sample out of a truckload from where the field had been treated slash sprayed, and I ended up just grabbing one now from the part of the field where we're actually parked in it right now uh, that wasn't sprayed. I've got them both in the chopper here. I'm going to end up uh, throwing them in my cooler. But this uh, sample here was the came from the part of the field that had been sprayed. And then this sample here came from the part of the field that was not sprayed. And you could see just in the texture of the feed and the size of these stems that where we didn't have it sprayed, the stems are a lot smaller than where we did have it sprayed. So what we'll do is we'll have our nutritionists send these two samples into the lab. We'll have them evaluated, and we'll kind of know, um, you know, what we're what we're doing by treating these fields and what, if any, um, value we're adding to the feed. I can actually see in these two samples that. The sample that was treated um, is a lot better looking stuff than the stuff that wasn't but by sending it to the lab we'll be able to get an actual analysis of both samples now this chopper has a harvest lab on it it's right there on the neck it's that green thing there we can measure uh, moisture uh, crude protein ADF NDF and the sugar levels of the feed um, however we are you know, going to send it right off to the lab so we can get a precise analysis of these two samples. Uh, the moisture alone, the difference in moisture between the two samples was about six points of moisture, which is um, significant, really. So, but it was also the stuff that wasn't treated was about eight or nine inches shorter than the stuff that was treated. So it was a lot more plant there and a lot more. Uh, plant where it was treated to, to have to dry down so well we're gonna throw these samples in this cooler here and I'll call my nutritionist he should be I don't know if he's come in the area yet today or not usually Mondays he's in our area so we'll get on with the rest of the video here I got to get moving along to the next field so this is an L-shaped bunk there's about 350 to 400 acres in here so far second cotton's a little light but it's not doing too bad this is more or less straight alfalfa here and um, we're having some issues with it coming up the chopper so this is an l-shaped bunk we filled in the center we're going to build it from the center out and then when we go to chop third cut and we'll be able to come in from one end with the third and um, when we do fourth cotton We'll be able to come in from the other end uh, with the fourth so we're going to run along get to the chopper i've got to scrape some of this gummy stuff off of the inside of the chopper it's all gummed up we we're having some trouble here last night being that it's been real hot this hay is drying out fast we're chopping it about eight ten hours uh in behind the hay bind right now and it is um it's just drying out fast and then when it gets to that 45 to 50 percent moisture it really gums up the chopper so we'll go ahead and get over to the chopper we'll show you what that looks like inside and um see how things go here today all right these guys have got this thing all full of fuel we're gonna roll in underneath it and i think we're gonna have to shim up this spiral band right there actually it's right there so we got to pull this transition chute down scrape it off and then we'll see if that has got the appropriate amount of shimming in there all right so we got this bolt is already loose i left that loose from last night because i plugged up we'll fold this panel down and we'll be able to get right up into the area where the haylage runs to get up to the blower. What feels better, this conk? 
concrete. Hey. Okay, so this is what everything looks like. Can't quite tell a lot, but we've got to get up in that throat area up there and we've got to scrape that out. That's what everything kind of looks like. This is the channel right here that the hay goes up through to get to the knives. We've got to scrape all of that material there off. Okay, there's not a lot to see here, but there's some shims that go in right here and that's gonna push that spiral band there up against the knives. We've got it, we had it shimmed good for first cutting but um, we're gonna make sure the gap is correct because that will matter. Well, we tried jamming another shim in there, but it did not work. It wanted to rub, so we've got that spaced adequately enough. It's, it's as tight as we can get it. However, it's just built up with enough stuff on there. So we're going to go ahead and wet down a windrow with some water. I'm actually setting the shear bar right now. We're almost done. We're about 60% of the way through setting it. Now it came into a knock as it moved that shear bar into the knife drum. And it's pulling the shear bar away from the drum right now. And it should be about done. I don't know if it's going to do uh, the right side or not. But it brings it in. Well, it, now it's going to put both sides in. It'll take it into a knock. You won't be able to quite hear it. But what it's doing, it's adjusting that gray bar that has the... That's what the shear bar looks like in there. And then this is the knife drum into a tick you could just about hear it now now it's driving uh, the whole thing out and now it is done so now we are going to start in chopping and I'm hoping that the water that we put on the windrow is going to help it clean itself out so that we don't have any plug ups Alright, we are introducing a little water to the windrow here, and what this will do is it will soften up that material that is stuck right from the knife drum all the way back through to the blower pipe, and it will clean that out. Once we get into some damper hay here, it will stay clean. But there was just so much caked on stuff in there that it has to blow that hay past it and it doesn't take much for the hay to get hung up and end up plugging between the knife drum and the blower. So this is the second load of water that we've put on so far here today. Alright, that trail load of water is empty. This field is done little strip and this trailer is loaded. Give you guys a shot of what that pipe looks like there. Just about see the silver in it. 